Listen. We're in the Champions League. We're in the Champions League. Finishing top three. We're in the Champions League. Where's Liverpool? Not there. Where's Chelsea? Not there. Where's Spurs? Not there. Oh my God! You're not going blind. Hey, what's going on, guys? John here, checking in for the United View, the match report of the game: Manchester United versus Galatasaray at Old Trafford. As Manchester United, I don't even, I don't even want to call it a shocking result. I feel like this has been coming, and Manchester United take a two-three defeat at the hands of Galatasaray. And Eric Ten Hag and his players are continually uh, showing us nothing, showing us disappointment, and it is very, very frustrating. And today, uh, good vibes. John is not here. Today is just John, and I feel. I feel infuriated uh, during my live stream on TikTok. I was absolutely livid. My head had gone. I had it snapped. My voice was shot. Um, thankfully, I'd calmed down a little bit now so that I can sort of look at the game in a bit more of an objective sense. But that performance, I'm not, honestly, I'm not mad about the performance. I'm mad about the second half in particular and that moment with Andre Anana. That was the moment where I truly snapped. And I want to get into that and talk about what I felt about that particular moment and, and really feel like Manchester United need therapy. Manchester United need, they need a drill sergeant. They need somebody to slap them away because that was unacceptable. But let's get into talking about the game because in the first half, I thought Manchester United didn't really start all that too brightly, although the energy and the atmosphere helped them to push that to the, to the next gear, if you will. Galatasaray came, and I didn't think that they were all that too hot either starting in that game. I thought Angelino had a bit of a difficult time. I thought Bowie, in particular, number 93, he was constantly pulling at the shirt and tugging at the arm of Marcus Rashford in particular, and I can see and sense Marcus Rashford's frustration building up, and from an opposition manager's perspective, that's the best thing you want. Continue to build on the frustration of Marcus Rashford, and I was hoping and praying that that wouldn't get into his head and I thought his assist for Rasmus Hoyland was the start of something special I've been telling you guys from the start that yes I agree with you guys 100% Marcus Rashford has not been good this season he is a shadow of his former self this season he has been different he needs to be different though because in the past few seasons he's not really had the proper partner to link up with who has he had Val Vegers somebody that's probably spent more time playing a defender as a defensive number 10 Cristiano Ronaldo, who you can't, you really can't build a relationship with in that sense. Marcus Rashford has been probably given the license to be free and express his style of play because he was probably our star boy, our only reliable out, output available star boy in, in that front three. Eric Ten Hag's probably given him that license, but now with Rasmus Hoyland, with players like Mason Mount in particular, he needs to be able to ch uh, sort of pivot his game style and I think the word selfish was thrown around a little too much because I don't think he was being selfish. I think he's just playing what he believed to be was what was giving him results last uh, season. And now this season, he's having to sort of change his game around a little bit. And I thought that today, that assist, him, that crisscross run, moving in from the left-hand side into the right-side channel, Rasmus Hoyland uh, aware of that movement and picking that outside run from the far post in, uh, Marcus Rashford that half volley cross he put a lot of pace behind it he smashed it almost into the path of Rasmus Hoyland but Rasmus made sure he got to it put his head behind the ball and that ball thumped into the back of the net and I thought this was going to be the start of something special and I promise you things will get better believe me or not you guys probably think I'm waffling but I promise you things will get better and I know Eric Ten Hag can get the best out of Rasmus Hoyland and, Eric, uh, and uh, Marcus Rashford and I honestly truly believe that today might have been the start because that connection was something special. But the way we conceded the goal was, again, unacceptable. Diogo Dallo is a, is a great individual and he's a happy human being and I love his energy and character as an individual. But as a footballer, you guys know. You guys know, if you've been following me for a while, you know I've always rated Aaron wan -Bissaka more purely because as a defender, your job is to defend. All this stuff last season telling me, John, what are you talking about? Aaron wan -Bissaka can't put a, cross, uh, put a cross in to save his life. It doesn't matter about that. First things first, you got to do your first job first before you worry about your second job. You know what I mean? And Diogo Dallo, don't get me wrong, he's been putting in a good string of performances. But when you're getting out-muscled and outplayed and outgunned by a Wilfred Zaha, respectfully speaking to Wilf, because I like Wilf a lot, I think he's a great guy, but he is a beyond his prime, past his prime, Crystal former Crystal Palace player, coming to Old Trafford and mashing up Diogo like that in the box. As a defender, you cannot allow the ball to bounce even any more than once inside the 18-yard box. But that ball bounced more than once, let alone twice, and Diogo Dallon couldn't, ha couldn't handle it. And by the time he raised his foot to block the shot, it was already too late. 1-1 at the half. And I'm sitting there thinking, 
this is not good. But me being me, I promise you, I promise you, things can get better. And in that TikTok live stream, I was fighting with a lot of the chat commenters saying, yo, things are going to get better. Stop waffling. Stop waffling. And things I thought did get better because Rasmus Hoyland, that first uh, disallowed goal that he scored, when he sell, when he pointed to the crest and he looked at the Old, old, uh, old Trafford faithful, that was cold. I was screaming because Ra I've been screaming for Rasmus Hoyland and he, I've been saying that he was the truth and he's showing up for it. This young 20-year-old brother, this, this guy, absolutely showing up. And you know what was shocking was when we conceded that second goal almost immediately thereafter. And you see Rasmus Hoyland turning around, looking at the bag, looking at his players, his teammates, some of them who are supposed to be his seniors, his experienced uh, colleagues. And he's looking at them and he can't believe it. And Rasmus, I, uh, I'm with you. I can't believe it because some of these players, they, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on because that leading up to that moment when uh, Andre and Anna stunk that pass, that was when, my, when I snapped. My head had gone. My head had completely gone. I was furious. You guys know I back players. You guys know I back players until, until I can't. No matter what, I will continue to back Andre Anana. I will always do that. But that was unacceptable what he did on that pitch there. Because it is not about a lack in quality of something that you do. It's not because you misplaced the pass. It's not because you, miss, you missed the shot. It's not about because your throw-in wasn't strong enough. It's not about you were weaker in the 1v1. It's literally a body language, an, an eye test that Andre Anana failed for me in that sense. Because Andre Anana, yes, he's known for his passing and whatnot. And last season, I was saying, guys, let's not rush the gun about removing David De Gea because David De Gea, yes, he's not the best that he used to be anymore, but he's the least of our concerns. We need to spend money on Kim Min Jae, a world-class defender. We need to spend money on Frankie De Jong. We need a midfielder that can help anchor this team. Some youth and quality all together packaged into one. We need a proper world-class nine. People were talking about Harry Kane. I said, I'm, I'm cool with Harry Kane, but I don't mind Rasmus Hoyland. I love Rasmus. Let's see what he can do for us because I kept a close eye on him when he played for Atalanta last season. At least we got Rasmus. But everybody was like, John, you don't know ball because it's all about build-up play and our transition through the thirds from the beginning third is bad because David De Gea this, David De Gea that. Um, you know what? Let me stop there. Let's talk about that Andre, Andre Anana position. I'm, I'm sorry to, to get on a tangent, but Andre Anana sees Casemiro in front of him. There is a Galatasaray player standing right in his... It's not even a peripheral thing. The brother is standing right here. He sees him. Casemiro's there. Galatasaray player is right there. I don't mind if he smacks... Because that distance requires a lot more power and pace behind the pass. I don't mind if he smacked that pass and then it hit the Galatasaray player. That pass was a half-assed pass as if he thought, oh, whatever, this Galatasaray player is not going to go after it. That pass was lackadaisical. It was unacceptable. It wasn't a lapse in concentration. It was completely a lack of respect for the Champions League and Manchester United. I'm sorry if you disagree with me or not, but that's what I saw from Andre Nana in that specific moment in time. And I was furious. On an eye test... The body language showed completely that Andre Anana's pass there was completely beyond a lapse in concentration. And that frustrated, infuriated me. And as soon as I saw Casemiro running for that Galatasaray player, I knew it was going to be a red card. Because you know Casemiro's got a good red card in him. And thankfully, thanks to Casemiro, we prevented an actual shot where eight or nine times out of ten, a decent player would smash that in past the keeper in the distance that he was at, right? At least Icardi scuffed the penalty shot. But no, yeah, we're a man down, but no, still a lack, lapse in concentration from our defenders, still a lapse in concentration for overall, and a poor performance again from a lot of the Manchester United players. And now it looks like our Champions League campaign probably could come to an end or something. I don't even care about the Copenhagen result. I don't care about the Bayern Munich game. I don't care about any of that stuff. It's about how we perform. Honestly, at this point in time, I wouldn't mind if we dropped out of the Champions League so that we can focus on just the Premier League and try to salvage our season. That's how down bad I am. And I, I'm probably speaking out of emotion right now. And tomorrow I'm going to watch this and go, oh, John, it's okay. It's going to get better. I probably feel will feel that way tomorrow. But today, right now, I'm allowing the emotions to soak in. And I feel sad because this was an absolute shite of a performance, especially in that second half. I'm sorry. The way we capitulated in that second half was, was unacceptable. I've already went past the time limit. Owen told me to keep it around eight. I'm sorry, Owen. I don't, I'm trying not to give you more editing stuff. But today was just... 
It was sad. Where do Manchester United go from here? What do we do? Everybody's talking about Eric Ten Hag this, Eric Ten Hag that. How can you blame Eric Ten Hag for that? How can you blame Eric Ten Hag for that kind of beyond unacceptable lapse in concentration? You can blame Eric Ten Hag for certain things in terms of substitution. I thought he made the Garnacho substitution pretty early today. But apart from that, how can you blame him when you go a man down because your goalkeeper just decided to just turn off for a split second? I don't know. What do you guys think? Get in the comments and let me know. If you guys are new to the channel, please consider subscribing to the United View. And if you guys want to, I'll be back with good vibes. I promise you. Just, just allow me with this moment. Just, I got to get it out of my system. If you guys are interested in good vibes, maybe you guys can come consider uh, checking out my channel. And hopefully tomorrow we can all revert to maybe feeling a little, more, a little bit more positive and a little bit more hopeful. But that's it for me for today. I got to go get some water. My throat is absolutely just <laughs> done. Um, yeah, and I'm out of here. Thank you, guys.